Hello everyone, it's time to jump into Project Cars with the Formula A at Brands Hatch. Hopefully I've got the settings right after the 50 second attempt. In terms of getting the video to play back or record at 60 FPS, not look like a complete muddy mess. And uh, with luck as well, we'll also have the audio levels, be it a uh, acceptable volume so you can hear me and the game. But no doubt, it will be completely wrong. As we pass, no, we don't pass the AI again, <laughs> barged off the track on the left hand side. Now, I've put the AI to uh, about 75% because, as you can see, they're still driving away from me. It would appear that I do need a bit more practice on this track. Now, with this build of Project Cars, been, uh, I was playing it last night with the Formula A, I had a little bit of practice, so really, there's no excuse, but it's the 5th of January, I think this is a, a build from maybe a couple of weeks ago, oh, we're running wide, the tyres are cold, uh, the most noticeable thing, and the biggest improvements, for, for those of you that don't have access to Project Cars, is uh, a, a continued improvement to the force feedback and force feedback feel, of course, I'm using the tried, tested and uh, rather classical Logitech G25 with its uh, nice coggy tin can feel. Uh, but, I mean, I do like the G25. As, as light and uh, tin can as it is, it's nice and responsive. And I have to say, the, the force feedback has massively improved in Project Cars. And I think that might be one of the things they've been focusing on over the last one or two months, or at least getting it so that you know, you jump from car to car and the force feedback just makes sense. And uh, although in the past you could fiddle with the force feedback on the in-game menu and get most of the cars feeling fairly decent, um, it, it was just a pain in the arse because you had to fiddle with it and it reset and, you know, you use this little menu. It's not really desirable. Of course, Project Cars is in development and that's why that was the case. But now, the point is, the force feedback seems pretty decent and uh, nice from car to car. Let's see if we can actually speed things up a bit. Maybe follow the racing line. That might be a good start. Drive on the road surface. Not mow the lawn, you know. Those kind of things that generally are conducive to a fast lap. We'll try and do that. Let's get in a better seating position as well. Now, the other thing I noticed uh, when I was playing this last night, and playing now, although the AI have disappeared, is that the AI, um, as long as you don't have a grid above 20 cars, uh, the AI tend to not be as suicidal. Previously, whoa oh dear, I just lost the back end. And uh, sponsored by Nvidia there. It's all right, that's my advertising contract. I have to uh, make sure the T camera picks up the Nvidia sponsorship. In, in previous versions of the game, the AI were uh, borderline suicidal. They just drive into each other, they didn't care. It, it was almost like they'd been sniffing glue before starting the race. Uh, which is probably what race drivers do, you know. I mean, you've got that, you've got money, you've got everything. You might as well just sniff glue. But that's what the drivers were like. But now uh, they're far more relaxed, and they do they do still crash into each other and make mistakes. But it's not so annoying as long as you keep the grid sizes down. And uh, last night when I was playing, I had some really good driving with the AI. Just um, you know, side by side racing, and they would sort of make a move on the inside. They they wouldn't do stupid stuff. They're quite aggressive. They would bump into me, but I I quite like that. I don't like AI that just stops, <laughs> which you do find happening in some simulators at certain points in time. Now, Project Cars also seems to be running a little bit better. I've not tried it with the Oculus Rift DK2 since I've got back from my little break but it'll be interesting to see if it runs better on that as well with less uh, latency because when I've tried it in the past with the DK2 uh, there would be a little bit of head tracking lag um, it, just, it just didn't have the smoothness to it which to me makes me motion sick very fast whereas uh, for example playing Blaze Rush uh, which is a fantastic top-down racer, um, a set of course, uh, lift the speed, uh, they don't have any lag at all when you're playing with the DK2. Uh, 
so they're far more comfortable for prolonged driving sessions. That's why we're on a screen right now. Let's try and actually hit the racing line. <laughs> we're getting slowly getting there. There's no rush. It's not as if each lap costs a couple of hundred pounds in tyres and car wear. Probably a couple of thousand pounds with a Formula car. Got a whole team sat there. They all have to be paid. They all have to have cups of tea made for them. And as always, the, the graphics are absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, unfortunately, in the YouTube video, to hit the 60 FPS, I have had to turn the resolution slightly down, so it might look a little bit murky. But on, on my screen, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. The shadows, the, the subtle highlights, the lighting. The way the uh, the road picks up reflections as well, even when it's not wet. Uh, if you set, if you run the game on like in the evening or early morning, the road does that really nice subtle reflection of the car headlights. It what, just picks it off. It, it just looks really uh, convincing. And just the little touches, like the leaves and particle effects coming off the road when you're driving, when you're doing a sort of 15, 20 lap race with AI. The, the lighting and, that, uh, and effects and just subtle details are really good for pulling you in and just, just drawing you in and making it a really enjoyable experience. I think we're actually catching up with the with the back of the grid. We'll, we'll get there eventually because I put this on an eight lap race. I don't think we will catch them, probably end up in a wall. As for the, uh, the physics of this Formula A, it's uh, the, it's calmed down a lot if you played the earlier versions of this car. It was absolutely crazy. It would just go all over the place. And I found uh, in in the more recent builds of project cars, vehicles with uh, with downforce on them seem to be fairly stuck to the track in it in quite a satisfying way. They don't wander around the track so much, which I find a bit irritating. Some of the slower cars and and cars without downforce for example like the Caterham and the Aerial Atom which are really fun cars to drive in project cars but they tend to uh, in my opinion follow the track around more than I'd intuitively expect they just sort of float around a bit which you can get used to and drive around but um, it's hard to actually explain I think the, the most accurate way of describing it would be it's as if the, the, the caster setting of the, the wheels was set wrong so the car just wants to keep going where it's going and then just follows the road where it's going. So maybe it is just a, it could just be a car setup thing. Be really interested to experiment with that. I need to fiddle with that. I'm still at the point of just going with the defaults right now. Uh, and, in, you know, until... That is not the racing line. Until the game's finished uh, or out of this development phase, I don't really think it's worth too much filling with car settings because so much has and will be changing with things you'll fiddle with something get something you like and then it'll change again and it won't work so you've just wasted your time but this formula a out of the box just driving like this it's just it's really nice i'm found it really relaxing as i was playing this last night at Sort of one in the more. Whoa, he's put his brakes on there. And I probably would have lost my wing. I think we've got damage off. Playing this last night at about one in the morning, I thought, you know, I've got to scratch the driving itch. And uh, I was on it for about an hour and a half, way past, uh, way past my bedtime, just doing laps with the AI. Getting absorbed into the visual spectacle. And there's something about Project Cars that I've. I just find it quite relaxing now. Oh, that's just uh, disgusting. Keep doing that. The thing with the uh, these corners on Brown's Hatch, you, uh, like any corner, really do need to uh, carry the speed through them, but those last corners through there, you can just throw the car in normally and get it to stick. And I think it's quite tricky in project cars to uh, gauge how much grip you've got at times and how much you can throw the car in let's let's go again
restart. Let's concentrate a little bit more on the on the driving. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner there's a little graph that shows you if your tyres are up to temperature and uh, towards the end of that race you see that they were blue which means that they were cold which would explain why I wasn't getting any front end bite. That's another thing actually I really like with Project Cars. Um, when you put the weather from dry to wet so you have a storm roll in, it looks absolutely incredible but the transition of grip is really nice and uh, graduated and it doesn't feel like you just completely lose control in, in other driving simulators. There's not that many that have wet weather, it's R Factor 2, some older ones, uh, but they tend, if they do have dynamic weather, whoops, that's uh, probably would have killed myself. If they do have dynamic weather, they uh, tend to, the transition doesn't tend to be very graduated. It's very, you've got grip and then all of a sudden you haven't. Whereas in Project Cars, it's a really nice linear progression. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's a separate video in the making. But we're just driving on a nice sunny day. I mean, look how this sun's just coming off the road there. It's really nice. Now one thing I haven't really tested out in this uh, build of project cars is just ragging the car and seeing how controllable it is over the limit. <laughs> so far in this video, when I've, uh, the back end's gone over the bumps, the car's just spun and I've lost it. Uh, but I haven't, I didn't really try my best to catch it. So let's try that after this lap. The front end not sticking, the front right tyre apparently uh, colder than frosted the snowman. Right, we're gonna we're gonna rag it a bit round here, probably end up dead. But it will, it'll be really interesting to see with project cars how much um, setup changes things. I, as I said, I haven't really tinkered with it and uh, you often find with uh, driving simulators or even just driving games that, that have depth or, or options to, you know, to make changes to the car setups that actually affect things. Sometimes they feel absolutely terrible and then you make the setup changes and it utterly transforms the game and with the more sophisticated simulators, um, R Factor 2, R Racing, a set of course, uh, because of the way they get the force feedback is calculated from the you know the loading of the front uh, of the um, the front wheels generally. Not only does changing the setup change how the vehicle handles, but also can transform the the, the force feedback feel, which again can make it feel like a completely different game just by fiddling with things. I did, uh, one thing I did find is actually turning the world movement to 100%, which basically locks your camera to the car body. I found that actually makes things feel a lot better for me, a lot less gloopy. I think a lot of people when they approach project cars Oh my god, they breathe. <laughs> I break so early there. Again, died probably four times now. A lot of people when watching Project Cars videos, uh, and even when playing it, it, it can feel quite gloopy at first. And I think a lot of that, and this is the case with the set of Corsa as well, a lot of that is caused by having the cockpit camera have a lot of movement to it. When you take that off, Although, if you're sensitive to motion sickness, I wouldn't advise it necessarily. But when you take off the smoothing and have it so that the camera is more locked to the car, I find it makes things feel a lot more responsive because you're you're moving with the car's actual movements in game, rather than some sort of arbitrary design of movement. 
Game Stock Car as well has some really strange uh, cockpit movements, which I actually quite like them, but I could see how they could really throw people off. And it's completely separate to the physics, uh, well, the movements are based off the physics, but the, the quality of the physics are completely separate to how the camera is moving, but it can really change your perception of the physics just by the camera movements. I was expecting the AI to break early then, and he did. Now it'd be absolutely fantastic to play this with a with a server wheel. Unfortunately, still a bit out of the price range at the moment. Oh no! But the new AccuForce wheels just gone up for sale. I think anyone can buy it. Well, if you put interest, you anyone can buy it now. But if you only just heard about it, it should be available to buy in the next month or so and uh, that's about £1,300 I think which is a little bit steep not necessarily steep for what you get but on the on the general scheme of things to buy for a hobby as a one-off payment it's quite steep so that might be an option at some point in the future if I can hide it and then uh, there's the open sim world as well which looks really exciting which I'm currently finding out, finding out about pricing but it'd be absolutely fantastic to play driving simulators with a wheel that actually can do the same torque loading as a real wheel car wheel would have, or at least close. But that's off topic. We should keep this on the topic of the Formula A in Project Cars as we come to lap six of eight. I think this video, this video is probably going to bore people to death. If you've got this far, then uh, congratulations. I don't know what it is about Project Cars, it just like zones me into a sort of hypnotic state. Maybe they employed Darren Brown as one of their test drivers and he's flashing subliminal messages to sort of, you are having fun, you will keep playing. He's in the crowd to the left with his little stopwatch hypnotising you. This, uh, this video has turned from a, it was going to be a quick jump into the Formula A at Brands Hatch and uh, natter about project cars into a sort of let's play. Now let's do uh, let's do some slidey driving. Let's see what happens. I'm going to be more aggressive with the throttle instead of just cruising. I mean I think this car, the default setup actually seems quite balanced in the sense that if you put the throttle on mid corner, the back the back end doesn't seem to step out. It's more that the car just starts to understeer. So it is with the default setup quite hard to just find the limit with the with the throttle. And one of the ways I used to like setting up the cars in R Factor Two is having it so that you get about just a couple of degrees of of angle on the car as you go into and come out of corners and then you can sort of just work out the limit from the angle as that you're taking the corner uh, and that, that worked really well with the Megan Trophy car, I used to race that online quite a bit it just to the point where you go into a corner and you know that if you, your car has a certain degree of slip angle to it you're basically on the limit okay, that's uh, too much throttle on there, oh we just killed someone again the cars coming past me. Let's see what happens if I rag the car a bit. Yeah, it does seem that when the when you light the backs up, it does become quite hard to maintain it. Which is, I mean, you generally expect that with a Formula car. Of course, I've never driven a uh, Formula race car, so this is more about what's satisfying to drive rather than what's necessarily realistic. I mean, the car with the front tyres are cold, but it's hard to sort of throw it into the corner. I think with the... Um, 
uh, the Lotus in Assetto Corsa, the sort of Formula Lotus. I think it's a 125T. I forget the names of these cars. But what's really nice with that is um, you can you can sort of throw it around. You can drive it a bit like Richard Burns Rally if you want to. Of course, you'd never actually drive a Formula car like that in a race scenario. But um, the feel you get from throwing the car around and the sort of nimble nature of it opens up more opportunities for, for overtaking or just recovering mistakes. And it's just fun. And it's hard to know how much of it's car setup related and how much of it's the underlying physics engine. I'm just trying to get the tyres a little bit warm. I'm just going to start throwing it around a bit. <laughs> it's a little bit of a drift. But with this, the car seems to mostly, you put the power on, it starts understeering in a very stable way. With, and the, the back end's not really st stepping out in a, in a, you know, it's, it's either losing it or it's doing a quick s snap step out that almost self-corrects. So it makes the car quite easy to drive in some regards. Harder in others because if you hit a kerb or you you know you really light at the rears and you're just going to go spinning around. But I would not be surprised if this is largely setup related. Just dumping the throttle. You see, the car's not even. <laughs> it won't even let me. It won't let me lose the back end just from turning. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a look at Project Cars, more specifically with the Formula A at Brands Hatch. Now, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. If you disliked it, you also know what to do, although you probably left already if you disliked it. Um, I'm going to be doing some more Project Cars videos with different vehicles as the game comes closer to launch. Um, as I say, it's coming along really nicely. Fantastic fun to play. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.